it's wild to watch, man. But the liberal corporate media, it really is made up of two kinds of shills at the moment. You know, there's the one kind that recognized that Donald Trump is getting stronger. I mean, every single day, poll after poll, smear after smear, he's only getting stronger. And then there's the ones that are literally just living in some crazy fantasy that, you know, they believe that something is going to change the momentum, that if they just gaslight harder, if they just spin a little faster, they believe that they can help Joe Biden win. I mean, these people they completely deny reality and they think that people actually believe them. It's remarkable. It's, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, pollster Frank Luntz, you know, for all his rhino-ness or whatever, you know, he's sort of a Romney type Republican, which is not a good thing. Regardless of that, he's been pretty good at his job, but the media does not want to hear it. To me, it's not that Donald Trump is winning so big in Iowa. That's not the story. It's that he's making it close in Minnesota. Minnesota is a reliable Democratic state. It votes Democrat in every presidential campaign. And poll after poll, I see Trump within two or three points in Minnesota. I don't think the media understands exactly what's going on right now. Yes, Trump dropped a few points after being found guilty on 34 felony accounts. But remember this, that would have destroyed any candidate as recently as 10 years ago. And the fact that Donald Trump is still even with, or in some cases leading Joe Biden after being found guilty of 34 felonies, oh my God, that is so significant. And one more point, I'm watching the independent vote. I don't believe that they're swinging back and forth between Trump and Biden. I think that they've decided that they hate both candidates. They hate both parties and they're voting out of anger, out of desperation, out of resentment that this is where our political system has gotten. So be very careful in how you analyze what goes on from now through the debates, through the election, because I think there could be a hidden anger vote that surprises everyone on election day. Yeah, he's absolutely right, man. I mean, these people do not want to hear it. I mean, his point was that none of this garbage affects Trump like it would have some other politician 10 years ago. But I think that's where he gets it wrong just a little bit. You know, it's not about the passage of time. I mean, a conviction, all the garbage they're doing to Trump would affect some other random politician right now today, but not Trump. And that's really... That's less about Trump right now and, and more about those 10 years. I mean, for the last 10 years, people have been subjected to every kind of Trump deranged insanity that the left can even imagine. I mean, Trump is a Russian agent. He's a dictator. He loves strongmen. Trump sells secrets. He's a violent predator. I mean, a crook, a tax cheat, a racist. I mean, every other istinism you can do. I mean, the list, it's just, it's never ending. You had impeachment one and two, fake insurrections. I mean, gazillions of felony charges that no one can actually to this day even explain. I mean, it's just after 10 years of bogus thing after bogus thing after bogus thing, no one reasonable believes anything that these people say about Donald Trump. I mean, it is the perfect example of the boy who cried wolf. And, and just like we teach our kids about crying wolf, right now we got a 59% chance that Donald Trump is going to win. It's pretty good. That's which actually is up which is up. It's up since since the verdict, actually, about right. four percentage points. So all that polling and all that news media, he's gone up slightly. On the Senate side, it's only gotten better um, for the Republicans there. They're at 80% chance to take the Senate and about a 60% chance to take the House. So right now, it's about a 40% chance we see a GOP trifecta this fall. These are the results. I mean, this is where we're at, man. And, and this is the reality heading into what will probably be the most watched presidential debate in history. And, and here's what people are watching for. They're watching to see if Joe Biden's brain actually functions. I mean, that's the bar. I mean, the bar is, can the man speak coherently? That's all people want to see. I mean, they, they've already seen with their own two eyes, right? But the media that some of these people still trust, they keep calling everything a cheap fake. They keep telling them that it's, it's all out of context. It's, it's all fake. It's all lies. And the guy's just fine. He's perfect better than ever. And the debate will be live right in front of their eyes. It'll be impossible to hide anything. And Van Jones on CNN, he, he can recognize that any weekend at Bernie's type moment on the debate stage has got to be a wrap for the Biden presidency. 
I just want to yeah. want to say that uh, I, I I do think it's to Biden's uh, advantage because they keep acting like he's going to walk out there and you know fall asleep or fall over. And so just the fact that he's he's not going to do that, he is he is sharp on policy. The big challenge that any sitting president has, and remember Obama had that problem in 2012. When you're president, you have a pretty big job every day. You're you have a lot to do. You have a lot to manage. And most of the people you're talking to are people who are reporting to you. It's it's unusual when you're president for somebody to come and just punch you in the head. And so remember the first Romney uh, Obama debate in Colorado. Right. Uh, Obama he he, he 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 didn't have the moves. He didn't have that that Muhammad Ali shuffle. He wasn't really Obama. He was this guy who had been in, you know in the Oval Office for four years. And Romney cleaned his clock. Now, Obama came back the next time and set the record straight. But Biden's got two things working against him. One is the momentum is not there with him, but also he's got a full-time job. All Trump's got to do is sit up in court, not fall asleep, and then go out there and say mean stuff about, about Biden. When you have a full-time job as demanding as the presidency and then have to turn on a dime and spend an hour and a half arguing with somebody who has no responsibilities, that is a tough mental turn for anybody, even a young guy like Obama. So we're going to see. But if Biden pulls that off, I think it will be impressive for that narrow pe- slice of people who haven't already made up their mind. Yeah. Here's the problem, man. And <laughs> come on, man. I mean, I cannot honestly believe that old Crying Van Jones would ever compare Joe Biden to Barack Obama. I mean, even at Joe Biden's absolute sharpest, I mean, the best he's ever been, there's no comparison. Even if Joe had been telling the truth about being a civil rights leader and the first of, of his law class and a historically black college that he attended after being raised by Puerto Ricans and witnessing his uncle getting eaten by pygmies before taking his sabbatical to become a long haul trucker. Even if all of that was true, even if that was the real Joe Biden, there still would be absolutely no comparison. I mean, it's, it's insane. But Van basically says, as long as the guy's brain doesn't reboot live on TV, He's going to win. I mean, that's that's the bar. That's a hell of a bar. And Van, how big of a moment is this for the president? I mean, I talked to folks this in the, the Biden world, Democratic Party, and they they say this is a hugely important moment for the president. This 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 is the entire election, as far as I'm concerned. The entire world will be watching. There, if you have, if if you are a carbon based life form, you're going to be watching. If you've got a functioning brain stem, you're going to be watching because. If Biden goes out there and messes up, it's game over. If, 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 he, if he walks out of there and a week later he's lower in the polls, it's panic in the party. But if he goes in there and he can handle himself against Donald Trump, a runaway train, a locomotive, a raging bull, then this guy deserves another shot to be president because that is tough. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If you can stand toe to toe with a runaway train like Donald Trump for an hour and a half, you are fit to be president, period, point blank. This is the whole presidency in a bottle in a week. Just listen to how these people actually think, man. They say, their own words, Donald Trump is a runaway train, a locomotive, a raging bull of a force or whatever. And they actually want to elect someone that can just survive talking to the guy instead of actually electing the actual raging bull force of nature. (laughs) I'll tell you, man, I mean, these, they probably couldn't even tell you why, right? They probably tell you that it's because Joe is just so good and decent and honest and all these things that are just completely and easily proven false, right? But anyway, it, it's a strange angle that Van Jones is, is taking, right? It, it basically saying if Joe can hang, it's a win. It's strange because he's, he's got to be smart enough to recognize that there is absolutely zero chance that Joe Biden hangs with this raging bull force. I mean, this... This debate is going to be interesting, right? But I don't think that there's any medical miracle available that is going to help Joe Biden hang for an hour and a half. I do not think it's possible. And I think the only positive outcome afterwards will finally be that all these liberals finally, finally wake up and actually see what is going on. I mean, no cheap fakes, just see with their own eyes what is actually going on. It's highly likely that this is the end of Joe Biden. Just he's going to get yanked out by his own party members, just begging him to do the right thing and step down. But who knows, man? We'll see. That's just my take. But let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.